This video will describe the redesigned gang tooling for the Tormac 8L lathe. Hello, I'm John Manura. This video will be a follow to my previous video on the design, the manufacturing, and testing of a new gang tooling system for the Tormac 8L lathe. After using that gang tooling system for several jobs, I determined some improvements needed to be made to the system. For one, the plate was too small, it needed to be made larger, and also I wanted to add some additional features to make it more versatile and easier to use. So in this video, I'll be describing this new system, the changes I made to the system, and at the end of the video, I'll be using this gang tooling system to machine a small part from my AccuSlice system. This is a new plate which I just built for the system, and I'm not showing all the machining of this because it's very similar to what I did for the previous video, but the plate is larger. In fact, this is the old plate, so it's one inch wider, and in making it wider, I was able to add another row for the adjustment for my gang tooling. And also I decreased the spacing between the gang tooling to give me, give me a little more versatility in adjusting the position of the uh, gang tooling. I also added uh, some additional holes here and that's for an additional parts catcher that I plan on adding in the future. So I'll be describing that also. So let me go and install the system. Install it just like the previous system. There's six holes that it used this mounting on this plate on the Tormac 8L and I'm using all uh, number six metric screws for everything. So everything on the system is going to be using uh, metric uh, number six screws just to make everything consistent. So these six holes are all drilled in recess, so these uh, bolts will all be below the bottom of the, the top of the plate. So again, so everything is precision machine, machine, so everything ni is nice and straight and perpendicular to the travel of the uh, lathe. So that's those holes. These four holes are for my tool post. I'm using uh, AXA tool post, and I'm using two of them. And I put two sets of holes in here just so you can have two positions for it in case you want to move it further in for jobs. So this is my, uh, my front tooling. be eventually locked in place after I align it. Now I am adding one additional feature. I'm adding some strips in the back here. These strips are adjustment uh, strips. And the purpose of these is to help in the alignment of the system. So I found out what's happening when I was installing this before. I put my gauge on here to get nice and parallel. And then I go and tighten it up and tighten it up and it moves. So this is a strip that goes on there, has um, set screws that I can lock it in place, that when I tighten it up, it won't move and hold it in position. It's not meant to hold it while it's running, it's just meant to help you align it as you're tightening it up. So those will be added too. So that's my, my front uh, tool post. And then in the back, I need to add a, a spacer block because this tooling is running upside down. So this uh, adjustment needed to be made different. So I actually had to raise a tool post a quarter of an inch. So this is just a plate, now it's the same way. Now the one thing I did change in this system, these holes are now a quarter inch closer to the front of the machine. Just gives me another quarter inch in length of my plate. So these are running right near the edge of the plate. So they're actually moved out a quarter. I was trying to move them out this way further, but I, did, I wasn't able to do that. The, the limit to the system is like four and a quarter inches to travel. I was trying to actually get uh, three gang tools in here, but I think the most I can ever use is two unless I remove this back tool post Then I can use you know three or four But using the uh, the front tool post and the back tool post the most I can put in the center at one time is probably two Just unless I'm using maybe using quarter inch bar stock, but in using three quarter inch bar stock uh, I think the most I can get is, is two gang tools in the center here But this plate is just to raise this tool post quarter of an inch for this uh, upside down uh, cutoff tool. And again, there'll be a, another adjustment bar attached there. And again, these go in with number six screws again, get attached. Now the other feature I'm gonna add to this is uh, a bar to catch pieces as they get machined off. What I found was happening in the past, I'd be machining a part, and sometimes to go on the plate, 
Other times I go down, you know, behind the machine, and I spent a lot of time trying to find the pieces that got, you know, lost in the uh, the shavings, and it was really hard to find. So I want to add some sort of a tool thing or sort of some parts catcher here to eliminate the parts from falling off, either stay on the uh, the, the tray or stay on this plate. And this is my first prototype. I may change this in the future, but this is my first testing piece. And again, it goes in with number uh, six screws. I may change this to a plate with some uh, some perforated uh, material so the, the cooling goes through it. But I'll see how that goes as I test it out. So it's just my first test to see how it works out. So there are the new features I added, adding these adjustment blocks to the system, adding this parts catcher so the parts don't fly off it, and then uh, increasing the number of holes for the gang tooling. So what I have now here on the gang tooling, I have you know, three positions depending on the length of my tool. If my tool is short, such as a, a centering tool, I might go up front to the, the very front position. If I have a long drill, you know, I might want to put it in the back or you know, a, a boring bar or a reamer. I can adjust it different positions depending on the length of the tool. And I have a, a different number of different tool styles. These are for uh, longer, or for actually shorter tools. If I have a longer tool, I created another style here in which this insert goes further back. I actually uh, recess that slightly so it goes back further. Again, that is for doing even, even longer tools. So a little, lot of versatility in designing this. I may make more in the future depending on the job and what issues come up. I'm using ER60 tool holders. They get attached with uh, number six screws. And so I'd set this up, and I'd like my tool to be, you know, I don't want it to be too far back, otherwise I won't have enough travel. I want to get the tip of my tool to be pretty much, you know, close with my tools here. So in this, in this case, I'd, I'd set it here. Now I have, these holes are spaced uh, a 0.4 inches apart. In the previous version, they were 0.6 inches apart. So it gives me a little more versatility if I want to get this a little bit closer to my cutting tool. If I was doing smaller pieces, you know, I can do that. But uh, I'm going to be using some uh, some three quarter inch material for this first job, so I can put it about there. For this first job, I'm going to be using two tools. I'm going to be using a centering drill and a quarter inch diameter drill. And depending on the length of the tool, I can move these front or back. So my centering tool is is pretty short, so I'll probably put that up front. You know, my drill is a little bit longer; it could go back. But in reality, I probably want this up, up front. If I had a longer drill, I'd probably you know, move it back. But I can actually mount both of these up front. The normal spacing, if I put these you know, back to you know, side to side, I have an, like an inch spacing, between an inch, inch, and an eighth spacing between the tools. So that's why I can't quite get three. See, if I wanted to get three tools in here, you can see I don't have enough spacing. I only have like maybe, well, I have an inch here, but I only have you know, half an inch here and a half an inch here. So there's not quite enough space to get three gang tools, but two do, two definitely fit. And then I can just space those you know, accordingly. I, don't, I, don't, I can put them together or I can you know, space them. And in this case, I'll probably space them like that. So that gives me you know plenty of spacing for my tools. Actually, this might go here and that there. So I've got a good inch between everything. So let me go ahead and mount these. So I first of all mount the mounting block to the base plate using two number six metric screws. Then I insert the tool post holder and then hold it in place with a bolt. And then use the same process to mount the second uh, tool post holder. On this one because I drilled it out and they just go in I had to put a spacer in the back. It's not just a spacer in the back. So. Now these are all machined that they're right on center vertically. But to get them centered when I'm doing a job, I actually created this tool, it's a pointer. And I use this, I'll take this tool out and I'll adjust it using this pointer to get my uh, X dimension set. But the uh, height, the Y dimensions, you know, is already set from the machining process. So the only adjustment I need to do is the, the X position. And also, then I put the tool back in and get my uh, Z position set. But uh, to get the X position I use this small pointer tool and you just get that to vertically or visually align with the center of my part. 
And that's a system set up for a job with, you know, two gang tools and two uh, tool post tools. My front uh, profiling tool and my back tool is a cutoff tool. Okay, these are the parts I'm making. And these are the uh, standoffs for the AccuSlice system. And I have it set up that I'll be making three at a time. Because I'm using my gag tooling. And I have it all set up with, actually only using three tools, but I'm running three parts. Making one, cutting it off, making a second one, cutting off, and making a third one, cutting off. With no interruption, just letting the system run continuously. And here it's set up, I have a three quarter inch bar of aluminum. And I'm using uh, three bits. I'm using a drill, first of all, to drill a hole half an inch deep. And then my profile tool is facing off the piece and then uh, profiling the outside. And then my cutoff tool is cutting it off. So here's a process. First of all, drilling a hole half inch deep, quarter inch of diameter, and facing the piece off. Contouring the profile with three steps and then cutting the piece off. And then repeating that same process two more times. Now I'm showing this video at 10 times the actual cutting speed, again for viewing purposes. I probably could have cut at least two more pieces on this uh, system, but I'm getting a lot of uh, buildup of the uh, metal filings, uh, which is starting to interfere with the tooling, so I'm going to stop at just doing three. Oh, catch it work good here. All three parts are buried up here in the top, at least they're not down the bottom, buried underneath all this. But there's one, there's two. That was five minutes and 34 seconds to run three parts. And there's my three, three parts. Now I could run more, but I'm certainly a lot of spaghetti uh, here. So I think I'll just do uh, three at a time, but I need like uh, maybe 200 of these made. So these will go pretty quickly doing three at a time unattended. I wrote all this software in the Pathpilot conversational programming. And there's four steps to each piece. So there's a total of 12 steps. And the way I did this is I you know, created my first set of four. Then you can create one of your programs and you can just duplicate it and then move it down. Then of course you have to edit it. Now if I look at the uh, at the profile profile here for this piece, you can see it runs from 0 to 0.3. 0. So three you know three hundred thousandths. And if I look at the the next one. It runs from 315 to 615. Likewise, the last one runs from you know, 620 to 920. So you just have to increase these values on this, the Z values for each of the steps as you add additional items to the list. And I did that for all these. I just duplicated all four steps down here and then just edited the, the uh, Z values. Make sure you save it when you're done. Save it again, and there's my program all ready to run. And there's all the, uh, the G code. In fact, if I look at the G code here, with that 1,059 steps, and this is the program throwing this, showing the three, the three steps. First step, the second step, and the third step. A couple other things to remember, which I described in my previous video. First of all, go into settings and make sure you have gang tooling set up. Then go into your uh, offsets, tool number four. You'll make sure that's a position three or four. And then when you go to your, uh, your programs, For your cutoff, using that tool 4, make sure those values, those Z values are negative. Excuse me, make sure the X values are negative. Here and here. And that's for, for all of these. That cutoff, second cutoff. Again, it's negative, or excuse me, negative, negative X values. Because the tool's on the opposite side of the bar you're cutting. Here's a computer screenshot as the parts are being machined. Starting off with drilling a one quarter inch diameter hole through the center of the part, 
then facing off the part, and then doing a profile on the OD on the part. And as a final step here, doing a nice slow pass to get a nice smooth surface on the outside. And then creating a bevel on the inside edge of the part, and then cutting it off. And then going on and drilling the second piece, and repeating the process, facing off, doing the profile, and this sequence is shown on the screen at five times the actual cutting speed. And then, uh, and then cutting off this second piece. And then repeating the process for the third item in the same manner. So in one setup, continuous running, all three parts are machined. So the only thing I need to do between each set of three pieces is to remove the aluminum shavings and reline the bar for the next set of pieces. And there's the three pieces I just cut off. I do get a little bit of burr on the back. But that just comes off that easy. I did a little tweaking of the speeds and feeds in the conversational programming to speed up the machining time. I was able to get the machining time for the machining of a set of three pieces down to about five minutes. So after removing the three machine pieces from the lathe, removing the aluminum shavings, and resetting the bar stock for each set of three pieces, I was able to machine between 25 and 30 pieces per hour. I was able to machine these 250 roller bearing standoffs for the AccuSlice carriages in one full day of operating with a gang tooling setup. This was a significant time savings over my previous setups in which I ran one piece at a time and had to manually change the tooling for each step. To machine the same set of 250 pieces would probably have taken me three full days in the past. So the time spent redesigning and machining this gang tooling setup was well worth the time and effort involved. This concludes this video on the design and testing of this third version of the gang tooling setup for the Tormac 8L lathe. As I described earlier in this video, this redesign encompassed several new changes from my previous gang tooling version, including machining the main mounting plate from an 8 inch wide by 12 inch long by 3 quarter inch thick aluminum plate, moving the AXA tool post 1 quarter inch to the left to give me some additional space for machining adding adjustment bars for the setup and alignment of the tool post, adding a parts catcher to the front of the main plate to eliminate parts from falling down below the lathe bed, machining three positions for the center gang tooling for using different lengths of tooling, moving these three sets of holes to 0 0.40 inches apart instead of the 0 0.6 inches apart using the previous version to give me some additional versatility in setting up tooling. These improvements definitely improve the use and versatility of this gang tooling system. In running the machining job I just described, the system worked flawlessly. The parts catcher caught all the parts and I did not need to go fishing for the parts underneath the lathe bed. For my first job using this new setup, I was able to machine 250 machine parts for my AccuSlice carriages in one full day or about nine hours of operating time. If you have any further suggestions or comments on this setup, Please add your comments to this video or send me an email with your thoughts. We are always open to your suggestions and we will continue to improve the system for use in our future machining jobs. And once again, thank you for watching this video.